Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Evan with Podpeak, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I use a Novation Launchpad Mini MIDI controller to control Reaper. So as you can see, I've got my MIDI controller housed in a custom angled rack that I built to hold the MIDI controller, as well as my PreSonus fader port. And the reason why I've integrated these tools into my workflow is that it creates a hybrid mixing environment. And what I mean by a hybrid mixing environment is that I can combine the hands-on feel of actual buttons and faders with hotkeys and mouse clicks. And this creates a customized workflow that suits my personal style. And quite frankly, it's pretty fun. So in this video, I'm gonna focus exclusively on the Novation Launchpad Mini and how I use it to control custom actions in Reaper. Let's see how it works. So one of the cool things about Reaper is that it's highly customizable. In fact, it's probably the most customizable DAW on the market, which is why it's gaining popularity. And one of the most powerful features for customizing your workflow in Reaper is the use of custom actions. Now you might be familiar with hotkeys or keyboard shortcuts. Any modern software application uses those. For instance, in Reaper, when you click Command M, it toggles the mixer. And this is a classic example of an action. Well, custom actions take it a step further by allowing you to chain multiple actions together at once, automating the actions you carry out regularly, thus saving you time. So this is where the Novation Launchpad Mini MIDI controller comes in handy. I use a lot of key commands and custom actions every day in my workflow, but I also like to just get my hands off the mouse and the keyboard sometimes. It not only gives my fingers a short break, it makes the process of recording, editing, and mixing more enjoyable. So as you can see, I've linked a multitude of actions and custom actions on my Launchpad Mini. The included software that comes with the Launchpad allows you to custom color your buttons. And as you can see, I've made labels for each of the buttons. The cool thing about the sticky labels is that you can easily replace them if you decide you wanna change a custom action. In fact, I do it all the time because I'm constantly dialing in my preferred workflow. So rather than giving you a complete rundown of all the custom actions I've programmed with the Launchpad, I'm gonna just show you a few of my favorites and how I incorporate them into my workflow and save myself a lot of time. All right, so I'm just gonna show you some of the custom actions I've made. So one of the first cool things I've done here is on the top, you can see that I have names of certain virtual instruments that I like to use, and we'll go over those in a minute. But right below there, um, you see these grid lines, and these are just quick ways to switch the grid. So that's kind of one of the one of the cool things that I did initially. Now I'm going to go ahead and just throw a couple of tracks in here. I'm going to hit multi tracks and I'm going to choose four tracks and I will just name them one, two, three, four, and then I will color them blue. Now something that I do a lot in Reaper as I use folders and normally what you would do if, if say I wanted to put these tracks into a folder I would have to make a new track so I could just double click here I'd move this track up above these and then I'd have to hit that indent sign and it puts them into a folder and then I'd have to name it you know folder so that's four steps right there but instead, uh, I've made a custom action where all you have to do is just highlight these and hit folder, and it prompts you to name it. And there it is. It folders them, and it auto-colored. So there's a really good, good example of a custom action that I've tied into my Novation launch key that I use quite frequently. Although it doesn't save a lot of time, it saves about five or 10 seconds. And if you add that up over a year, just right there, that saves a lot of time. Now, while I have these tracks here, I wanna just show you some other actions that I've put into place on the launch key. So, you know, a lot of times I just like to quickly resize my tracks. And so I built these up and down buttons. So click this one and it just makes all the tracks bigger and do this and it makes them smaller. Just kind of a quick way to uh, resize your tracks. I've also 
um, made custom actions. If I want my tracks all to be small, I can just hit this one. If I want them to be medium sized, I can hit this one. If I want them to be large, I'll hit this one. And if I want them to fit to the screen, I'll hit this one. So those are some pretty cool uh, custom actions that I use frequently on my launch key. Uh, of course, we've got mute toggle, solo toggle. This will put a master track um, in your timeline. That just toggles it on and off. This will put your stereo mix in mono. If you want to A-B things, you can just put it into mono. Uh, this will bring up your mixer. So, you know, those are just basic actions, but I still wanted to put them on my launch pad just because I like to use them every now and then. So one of the things that I do a lot is I compose a lot of music. And when I'm coming up with ideas, I want to be able to work really fast. So let's say I want to put an instance of Arturia Analog Lab in Reaper and I want to start working. Well, if I didn't have a custom action set up, I'd have to do a bunch of steps and I'm going to go through those really quick. So I'm just going to make a track. I'll resize it. I'm going to put the instrument on it. So I've got to go find the instrument. Instrument, there's Analog Lab. It's going to take a second to load. Uh, I'm going to need to record arm the track. Then I'm going to have to hook up my Arturia Keylab 49. And then I'm going to have to click on the record monitoring. And now I hear sound. Uh, so let's look at how fast this happens with the way I have it set up on my launch pad. So basically I have this set up on page three, so I'll click that here, and that just highlights my instruments right here. I'm gonna hit Analog Lab. It brings up Analog Lab, and it's playing instantly. So this enables me to work really fast, especially for just coming up with ideas. This custom action saves me unbelievable amounts of time every day that I'm working. So that's a really great one. And now I just want to show you one more really cool custom action that I use a lot. Now I'm just going to go ahead and record something. Okay, so when I'm working with MIDI, I like to print things as I go. And so one of the custom actions that I came up with is to print stereo. I'm going to hit that. And what it did is it just printed that MIDI to audio. But what it also did automatically for me is it muted my original track and it bypassed the effects and it hit it in the track manager automatically. So I'll pull up my track manager. There is my original track. You can see that it's muted. The effect is bypassed. Uh, but if I ever wanted to go, you know, see what uh, patch I use or anything, it's always going to be there. But again, like that custom action just saves me so much time during the course of my day, especially when I'm trying to work fast. Now, the last custom action that I want to show you is, again, something that I use a lot. So let's say I've got just a bunch of tracks that I've been using, and there, there are some that I've decided to mute. I don't want to use them. Well, normally what you'd have to do is you have to pull up your track manager, and then you have to manually, let's say I want to hide this bass stem, you have to manually click it out of the track control panel and the mix control panel, and then it's hidden. Uh, you also have to mute it etc etc but one of the custom actions I've made is you just highlight the track and click hide and it automatically mutes it and hides it in the track manager and it locks it and it bypasses the effect so pull the track manager back up uh, you can see that it's locked so I'll unlock it I'll unmute it and then I will bring it back up um, so again you know these are just these are things that I use all the time that just save tons of time. Now, I've got a 
a bunch of other actions and custom actions here. I'm not going to go through all these, but I just wanted to show you how fun and powerful a basic, simple MIDI controller can be, especially when you're working in Reaper. This MIDI controller costs $99. I feel like I got my money out of it in the first week, and I just love it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope that you can see the value in, in using a MIDI controller with Reaper. And really, I hope you can see the value of just how powerful Reaper is. So if you dig this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel. If you have questions about podcast editing, podcast production, feel free to get in touch with me at evan at podpeak.com. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys soon. All right, peace out.